Mr. Juan Garcia Callardo Frings, who is the vice president from the region Castilla and Leon, Spain. Uh, Mr. Garcia Callardo has the background uh, inter alia in the legal studies, extensive legal practice, and the business law. So interesting to see whether the politics and legal aspects are coming out in your speech. Please. Thank you very much for the presentation. For me, it's an honor to share the floor with such an amazing colleagues. Uh, I agree with most of the concerns and ideas that they have exposed, and I would like to expose mine um, in the minutes I have. Um, first of all, I would like to talk about uh, my region. Castilla León is uh, the biggest region in Spain. Its uh, extension is 94,000 uh, square kilometers, and uh, we are the biggest rural area in Spain and the third in Europe. Uh, we are known for many things. We are the region in Europe with the most uh, world heritage, even more than the archifacemus Tuscany from Italy that uh, many of you may know. But you have to know that in Castilian we have even more. That makes us uh, be leaders in some areas like uh, rural tourism, where we are the first in, in Spain. But also we have uh, other things that make us a very interesting uh, region. Um, we are the leaders in food production. We have a very strong uh, agri-food industry. Uh, we have also a very strong automotive industry. But uh, we have many other areas in which uh, we are uh, very, very strong. Um, we have nine universities, four of them public, five private. We have 32 research uh, centers. We have uh, 2,500 innovative companies, but for us, it is not enough. We, can, uh, we could stay still, but uh, we prefer to keep fighting and, and growing and offering our people a better future with an economic growth. Uh, in this line, uh, since our entrance in the government, we have made innovation uh, our uh, political priority, at least in the economic part. Um, we attended um, an international startup event in Salamanca. It's called uh, Startup Ole, where Ms. Gabriel attended, the Commissioner of Innovation. And there we heard about a project that was called Innovation Valley. So when we hear it and we had like a, a little meeting with the commissioner, we said, that's our opportunity. So uh, we started working on it. We started writing the project to join uh, this club. And uh, finally, some weeks ago, we could present it in my hometown, Burgos, uh, where we were uh, pleased uh, to present the first innovation valley from the whole European Union. The first from more than 200 regions in all Europe. And that's not a casualty. That's, uh, the, um, that, that means it's, uh, it is uh, the result of uh, having a public policy oriented to innovation and a public policy that uh, thinks uh, innovation is important. Um, nowadays, uh, we are uh, preparing. Today, we have had a, a meeting uh, with the Coalition of the Willing to prepare a trip to, in, uh, to Silicon Valley. Uh, where, as you know, it's a, a very important place for startup, entrepreneurship, and where we are going to go to tell what are we doing uh, for startups, for innovation, for business angels, uh, for businesses. And also, we are going to go there to learn uh, how they are doing and to take the best uh, practices to our society, to our regions, because uh, we think that the future must be built uh, learning the best practices from abroad and continuing with the good things that we had. As uh, our, my colleague from Romania uh, has finished uh, his speech, I also think that we have to innovate from tradition. Uh, we cannot uh, start up from zero. We have to continue with the activities that have been made in the rural areas for centuries, making them better, making them more efficient, and ad uh, adapting them to the 21st uh, century. For this reason, uh, we are um, trying to take uh, 
startups, entrepreneurs, uh, digital nomads to our villages. Uh, and for this reason, this program, the Startup Village program, is a, a very interesting one. But we think uh, this is not enough. Uh, we have to put the focus on the people that is already uh, living their lives in the rural areas, in our villages, and we have to make uh, them, their life better. I think that uh, living in rural areas uh, should not be a handicap. It should be a good thing. So it, I think the, it's a duty for all the politicians, for all the public administration, to make a big effort uh, to make it easy to install and to stay in the rural areas. We have to give them good uh, healthcare systems. We have to offer a good education. We have to maintain a good uh, infrastructure. We have to put the focus on mobility. And of course, and it's a thing that uh, concerns me a lot, we have to offer a good internet uh, connectivity. And uh, I would like to uh, put the focus on this uh, for the future and ask the national government in Spain to help us in, in this uh, challenge. Um, I think that uh, innovation um, is not a thing from urban areas only, as uh, I have heard in, uh, by one of my colleagues. Actually, innovation was uh, started, the biggest step in innovation was made in rural areas. Uh, think about uh, how the society uh, passed from uh, fishing and hunting to, to get food, uh, to, to get food and to get feed, um, and they passed to a model of agriculture, um, having a smaller piece of territory of land to produce much more food. I think that's the reason why uh, why we should um, put the focus on innovation on rural areas because they know how to do it. They have been doing it uh, in the during uh, the past uh, years and, and centuries, and they'll do it again uh, to survive. I've heard uh, many times um, the importance of innovation. I would like to say that uh, without innovation, there is not competitiveness. And we need competitiveness to, to have a bright future uh, for our people. And uh, our regions cannot compete with foreign countries or with other parts of the world in labor costs. They, we cannot um, leave the protection of nature apart. But what we have to do com to compete with other parts of the world is with innovation, with technology, and promoting uh, knowledge. Uh, for this reason, I'm, uh, I agree with what I've heard here, that uh, we should promote cooperation between companies and universities uh, and uh, give money to programs that are oriented in this way. Also, what I think is that um, in, in other times, uh, gold and silver was what made a country or a region rich or poor, uh, having it or having it not. And today, as I have heard from my colleagues, uh, we should put the focus on knowledge. So I think uh, we are in the good way. We have uh, given innovation um, a good part uh, of our um, government. And we are going to follow this path, uh, giving more money to research and development, giving more money to innovation, making uh, better uh, water infrastructures uh, to our people in, uh, for, of the primary sector. But what I think is that uh, we must uh, remember three words and put them in, practi in practice in relation with uh, rural areas and people living in our villages. We have to listen them more. Because sometimes we are uh, doing regulations, uh, we are uh, approving uh, legislation uh, from the cities without listening to the people living in rural areas. I've been seeing this uh, with a great concern in my home country, and I think that we must uh, remember that also in Brussels, because sometimes we are putting so many bureaucracies, so, so many regulations. We uh, make people in the rural areas uh, being all the time with papers, going to the city, fighting with the public administration, 
And what we have to do is to give them freedom to do their activities. We have to help them to modernize uh, their um, companies. And I think that if we do so, we'll bring them a better future. And that's it. I uh, keep uh, the attention uh, to the rest of the speakers. And I would be glad uh, after to answer all the questions you may have.